Good morning, Big Community. I'm Joshua, and welcome to our time together this morning. And we are continuing in our series on spiritual discipline. Today, we're going to reflect on the uh, spiritual discipline of silence and solitude. When was the last time you experienced a time being quiet in complete silence? I often used to go at Lemba, Rumadoa in Lemban. It's a nice place that I used to apply this spiritual discipline in my life. But I must confess, it's a challenging uh, uh, for being quiet in this busy community that we live. So many people, noises, and especially in Indonesia. So being part of this digital area also is a big challenge because it seems like we never get disconnected from our phone, from our social media. If you are like me and you are facing this challenge, silence and solitude is for you. And is it possible for us in the global society experience this spiritual discipline? Think about that. How could we, in this season that we are going through the lockdown, experience such an important element to we can bring uh, into our lives? First, let's pray. God, we thank you because you know who we are designed. You know the best for our lives. And through your scriptures, we can learn something special that we can enrich our spiritual life through this spiritual discipline. Help us to reflect and to apply in our life. First, I'd like to ask you something. What's the biblical view of spiritual discipline of silence and solitude? We know we all need time of silence and time of no silence. Time to be in community and time to be in solitude. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7 tells us that there is time to be silent and there is time to speak. Let's define silence and solitude. They have to be hand on hand. We cannot have only silence and without having solitude. And being solitude without being silence lose the purpose for. So silence, it is a fasting of noise, of talking, speaking, and listening. It's a time that we focus on hearing God. We can see that in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. But the Lord is in His temple. Let, let all the earth be silence before Him. Solitude, it is different. Solitude is type of fasting from other people, believe it or not. It's moving away from distractions of the world. It is a way that we get out of the social entertainment in order to spend quality time with God Himself. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. This gives us the foundation from the biblical experience from people from all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament. How many of us today need to apply silence and solitude in our spiritual journey? Have you done that? One very important point is, I'm not here telling that we need to empty our minds, to get blank, or even process, apply yoga. No. You, you know, yoga is something, but it's not a spiritual discipline. Spiritual discipline, it's an intentional place where we can focus 
in hearing God and enjoy His presence. It's not about empty our mind. It's about filling our mind with the presence of God, with the Word of God. It's seeking to hear Him. It's a mindful decision to silence other voice, silence our inner voice so we can hear God's voice. Silence and solitude is a place that we learn how to pause, how to stop doing things, stop interacting with others, stop entertaining ourselves with one purpose, to focus on hearing God's voice and enjoy His presence. What a privilege we have to not only talk about that, but bring this spiritual discipline into our Christian life. Like the spiritual discipline of fasting food, fasting voice and being with people, in a silence and solitude. There is a time, there is a purpose, there is a way to do it. And we can look into many characters in people in the Old Testament throughout the Bible. But today we're going to look into uh, one person in the Old Testament and one person in the New Testament. You are familiar, I'm sure, with the life of Elijah. When he was pursuing God's voice because he was looking for a direction, a guidance for his life. And in this passage, in 1 Kings verse 19, verse 11 to 13, we said in the scripture said to us that the Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the fire, but Elijah was able to hear and acknowledge God's presence in a gentle whisper. Let's bring our attention for something that is very important. Because sometimes we have experience in the past, hearing God's voice, meeting God in a very loud in a very uh, sh uh, incredible moment. Praise God if you have that. But that experience in the past is not the only way that God revealed himself. And sometimes God wants to reveal like for the prophet in a gentle whisper. God's voice must be the element that we are pursuing. And in order to hear God's whispering to us, we need to exercise spiritual silence and solitude. And the best way for us to look in the New Testament is the life of Jesus, our Lord and Master itself. He not only talked about it, he experienced and he modeled to us this wonderful spiritual discipline. And we see in Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, he's telling us, and after Jesus had dismissed the crowd, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. The gospel records not only once, but several times, Jesus taking time to be in silence with the Father. And also in solitude, alone with the Father, talking to Him, listening to Him. This gives us this connection with the spiritual discipline that Waldemar and Rosemary mentioned last week about hearing God through Scripture, hearing God through prayer, and now through silence and solitude is the same purpose, is to meet God, is to hear His voice. And we see in so many different places. But I want to call your attention for this invitation. There is a time when Jesus, he settled the example, he modeled to his disciple. But then we see that Jesus invites his disciple 
to practice this silence and solitude. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 31 and 32, we see that he said, Cain, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. We see here important principle. We see here Jesus caring for their rest, for their and and this rest could only be as they silence themselves and withdraw themselves to a quiet place. And Jesus invite them, suggest to them to come to this quiet place. And we see here the disciples, the follower of Jesus respond in obedience for this wonderful invitation. They went right away to this solitary place. And I want to take these words, this invitation of Jesus. Now, as he invited his disciples in the past, he is inviting you to this quiet place. He's inviting me. He's inviting us. My question for you this morning is, what is stopping you to doing that? What will be the element that might interrupt you? Voices from outside? Distractions from inside? Thinking that can never, can never stop to process in our minds? What kind of distractions in our eyes that we need to process in order to enjoy this quiet, silence, place that we can enjoy God's presence alone? In the modern church, I've been experienced and probably you have. It's a remind for you then, or maybe you haven't, haven't heard. This is a way that we can apply this spiritual discipline in our lives today. Many Christians have quiet time. It's a morning devotional that we choose to be silenced and hearing God's voice through, through Scripture. That is a spiritual discipline of silence and and solitude. I don't know how you do it, but I personally enjoy very much this time that I can, through my day, be quiet in the presence of God, listen to Scripture, meditate on what God is telling to me. It's a kind of sailor that we just... Wait with the expectation that God somehow is going to impart, review something that I can take it for that day in my life. How often do you do your quiet time through your week, through your day? It's not about religiosity. It's about a divine encounter that nothing can take as a distraction. Only you, the Word, and God Himself. Another way the modern church practice this spiritual discipline is through silence retreat. This is a time that a group of people or individual, they set a place where they go for one day or two days just to be quiet, to silence their mind to the, their thinking process that is accelerated for so many stimulation. They choose to be in these places so they can be silenced in the presence of God. I've done this before. I confess that it's quite a challenge to be one day or two days just quiet, especially doing nothing, just spending time with the Word. But time to time, you and I, we need that. And that's where God works something in us. It's like a disintoxication of things that we go through. For me as an introvert, 
it's quite, it's not too difficult. The biggest challenge is for the extroverts like my wife. And, but both, no matter if you are introvert or extrovert, a silence retreat can be a blessing to your life. Why not consider that during this lockdown? We are there at home anyway. But uh, you cannot imagine how many things God can bring to you. In conclusion, I'd like to give you three very practical aspects of how you can apply spiritual discipline in your life. First, find an intentional place. That's right. Think about a quiet place, a safe place, a place that you can escape from world around you, distraction. We can call a sacred place that you set apart, that you can meet God That It can be anywhere. So, but make sure that you are not distracted with technology, phone, social media, or people at home. It can be a private spot in your home. It can be a quite isolated place in your work. But, if, uh, but also can be a walk that you do in your garden or around your block where you live. Make sure that that is the place that you set in your heart, in your mind to meet God. The second thing is set an intentional time. Call that time. Put in your calendar. Sacred time with God. So this place, you will make sure that you put in your high holy priority. Nothing will distract you. So then you can bring quality time for this spiritual discipline in your life. And the third point, the third point is intentionally put, set your mind, heart, soul, and spirit to hear God. That's right. You might feel awkward not doing anything. Just be there, you and God. But take advantage of that silence, that pause moment, and be ready to listen to the voice of your Creator, your Savior. Be ready to enjoy His presence. Learn from His wisdom that only in an eye-to-eye, heart-to-heart moment that words are no need that we must cut what God has for us and be ready to be recharged by His power, by His presence, and be transformed by God Himself. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that we could see in your life this beautiful spiritual discipline. Enable us to set an intentional place, an intentional time, that intentionally we can hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day, and I hope you can enjoy your silence and solitude through this lockdown in a very powerful way.